What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to build a GPU crypto miner. I'm gonna go over the entire process step by step. So if you're a beginner, this is gonna be the perfect video for you. Let's get right into it. First, let's talk about all of the items that you will need to build your rig. By the way, guys, I will leave a link to all of these items in the description under the video. All right, guys, so the first thing you're going to need is a mining frame. You will need some cooling fans. You will need a motherboard such as the Asus Z490A or Z490P. These motherboards can hold up to six graphic cards. You will need a CPU processor. You will need a few sticks of 8GB RAM. You will need a SSD hard drive. You will need your graphic cards. In this video, we're going to be using NVIDIA 3070s. You're going to need a power supply unit. You might need two of these depending on what kind of cards you're going to use. This is going to be a 3070 rig, so we're only going to need one. Of course, you will need some risers and some riser cables. And you will also need an Ethernet cable, a wireless mouse and keyboard, and a USB hard drive. All right, guys, so the first thing you're going to do is assemble the frame. This is a very easy process. It should take you no more than 10 minutes. The frame is going to come with these golden screws. You're going to screw them onto the frame and then attach the motherboard to them. Now, one very important thing that you guys have to know is that you should never put your mining rig on carpet. That can cause an electric shortage and you don't want that. The next thing we're going to do is connect all of our fans and attach them to the frame. One of the wires that comes with the set is made for gigabyte keyboards. You guys won't need this. So the first thing we're going to do is take this box that comes with the fans. We're going to take the big main wire and we're going to connect it to the box. This part right here, we're going to connect the motherboard and the second cable right here, we're going to connect the power supply. Next, we're going to take all the wires that are attached to the fans and connect them in these ports. Each of these wires is also going to have another plug and the next step is to connect these plugs. We're going to grab this cable right here and we're going to connect this cable to all of those second plugs. After you guys are done connecting all the wires, you're going to take the last cable and connect it where it says fan. All right, the next thing you guys are going to do is attach the fans. You're going to take the screws that come with the fans and screw them on from inside. You guys are going to do this for all five fans. You only have to screw in the top screws, you don't have to screw in the bottom. The fans will be connected to the motherboard and the power source later on. Alright guys, next we're going to set up our motherboard. Make sure you do all of this on top of the motherboard box. The first thing we're going to do is install our CPU and our RAM. Alright guys, so the next step is to take the CPU and insert it into the CPU slot. This is very easy to do, you're simply going to raise the little pin, you're going to lift the cover, you will then take the CPU, it's going to have two little holes in the bottom, and you're simply going to insert it. So let's go ahead and align that and insert the CPU. And just like that is that easy. Next we're going to go ahead and close the CPU slot, lower the pin, lock it, and the black top part will pop out. You won't need the black part. Alright guys, the next step is to install the CPU fan. You guys are going to align the fan with the Intel logo facing to the right. What you're going to do is press on the fan diagonally and lock it into the motherboard. And then we're going to diagonally do the other side. Now the next step is to connect the CPU fan to the motherboard. We're going to connect this wire to where it says CPU fan on the motherboard. The next thing we're going to do is install our RAM. Now a lot of people say that RAM is not important, but trust me guys, if you guys want a stable rig, I strongly suggest you guys use at least a couple of sticks of RAM. The next step is taking the motherboard and attaching it to the frame. Make sure you guys do this carefully. You guys will take the screws that come with the motherboard or the frame and screw them on. The next step is to connect our power supply unit. Since this is a 3070 rig, we're only going to need one. If you guys are using very powerful cards such as 3080s and above, you will need two units. You can go to nicehash.com and see how many watts each of your graphic cards will take. Also keep in mind your computer will use around 2 to 300 watts. Remember, you should never max out your power supply unit wattage. You should run it at around 80%. So if this power supply unit is 1300 watts, the max it should be running at is around 1040 watts. So these 3070 cards, they take around 120 watts each. Multiply by 6 cards, that's 720 watts plus around two to 300 for the computer, that's around 1,000 watts. So one 1,300 watt power unit is perfect for the setup. All right guys, the next thing we're going to do is install the power unit. You're going to screw in the two left screws. The next thing we're going to do is connect the motherboard cables to the power supply unit. You're going to plug in two cables that are right next to each other to the power supply unit, and then you're going to plug in this main connector into the motherboard port. Make sure you do this carefully. You don't want to damage the motherboard. Now the next thing we're going to do is connect the CPU cable to the power supply unit and then connect that CPU cable to the motherboard. Let's go ahead and take the CPU cable and plug it in. And now we're going to take the other end of this cable and plug it in the motherboard. It's going to have two separate plugs. You guys only have to use one. One will be unplugged. So we're going to plug it into the left port. The right port is going to be unplugged. All right guys, the next thing we're going to do is connect our fans. Your power supply unit is going to come with a SATA cable that looks like this right here. We're going to take the main cable of the fan and we're going to connect it to the SATA cable. We will then take the opposite end of this cable and connect it to the SATA port and the power supply unit. Alright guys, your power supply unit is going to come with some velcro straps, so right now is a good time to do some cable management. You don't want your wires all over the place. 
Okay, cool. The next step is to connect our fans. All right, so we're gonna take this cable right here, which is connected to this part right here, and we're gonna connect it on the motherboard where it says fan. So you guys will see it right here, these little four pins. We're gonna plug it right into here. Let's go ahead and do that. Cool. All right, guys, next we're gonna take this cable right here, the one that has the four pins, and we're gonna plug it into where it says RGB, right over here. All right, guys, now it's time to power on our rig. We're gonna connect our wireless USB keyboard and mouse drive, and we're gonna press on the power button to power on the rig. But before we do that, first let's connect our power cable to the power supply unit, and also we're gonna hook up an HDMI cable to our TV and connect that to the rig. Now let's go ahead and press the power button. Everything should come on without a problem. If you see the Asus logo when the screen loads, that means everything's good. The next thing we're going to do is connect our SSD hard drive. We're gonna take the SATA cable that came with the power supply unit, connect it to the SSD drive. Then we're going to take this cable and connect it to the SATA port and the power supply unit. By the way, when you guys are connecting anything, the rig must be turned off. Then we're gonna take the SATA cable that came with the motherboard, also connect that to the SSD drive and connect that to the motherboard right over here. All right guys, the next thing we're going to do is set up our BIOS settings. So go ahead, power on the rig. You guys will see this screen pop up. So the next thing we're going to do is click on F9, search. We're gonna type in above 4G, click OK. And where it says above 4G decoding, you want to make sure this is enabled. Okay, now we're gonna click on advanced mode right here. We're gonna click on advanced. We're gonna click on system agent SA configuration. Okay, next we're gonna click on graphics configuration. We're gonna click on primary display. And we're gonna select CPU graphics. Now we're gonna click on peg port configuration. PCIe X16 link speed. We're gonna click on generation one. And now we're gonna click save changes. Click save, okay. All right guys, the next thing we're going to do is install Windows on a USB drive. You guys don't have to pay for this. This is 100% free. Simply go on the Windows website. So you guys are gonna scroll down. You're gonna select Windows 10, confirm. Choose English, confirm. And you're gonna download the 64-bit download. Now, if you guys are on a Mac, you're going to press Command Space. You're going to type in Boot Camp Assist. You're going to hit Continue. You're going to uncheck Install Windows 10 or later version. Click Continue. It will start downloading, and when it's done, you guys will take the USB drive and plug it into the rig. Now, we're going to take our USB drive that has Windows installed. We're going to plug it into the USB port. And now, we're going to turn on the rig. Okay, now we're going to install Windows. Click Next. I don't have a product key. Windows 10 Home, Next. Accept. Next. And the installation will begin. It's very important that when it asks you to make a password, you guys don't make one. Your rig won't be able to auto restart if you have a password. After we're done installing Windows, we're going to connect our Ethernet cable and then install the graphic card drivers. Now it's very important that you guys download and install the graphic card drivers before installing the graphic card. If you install the graphic card onto the computer and then connect to the internet, Windows will automatically install their own drivers and they're not going to work for mining. This is one of the reasons why graphic cards are not recognized by NiceHash. All right guys, the next thing we're going to do is connect our graphic cards. In order to do this, we're gonna have to buy some risers and some cables. The first thing you will have to buy is this eight pin to eight pin plus six pin cable for each graphic card. All right, when you guys install graphic cards, it's very important that you connect everything correctly. VGA slots are made strictly for graphic cards and SATA slots are made for random things such as fans and hard drives. You cannot connect your graphic cards into SATA slots. That's very dangerous and can cause a fire, so be very careful. Since you only have six slots, we can only use six cables to connect all of our cards. So we will have to buy splitter cables. And of course, we'll have to buy our risers, which are these right here. All right guys, so different graphic cards are going to have a different number of power slots. If you have a 3060 card, it's gonna have one slot. If you have a 3070 card, it's gonna have two slots. And if you have a very powerful card such as a 3080, it's gonna have three slots. If you're only building a rig with one or two cards, you can run the cables directly. But if you have a lot of cards in the rig, you will have to get these splitter cables. All right guys, so we're going to take this cable right here. We're going to connect these two plastic parts together and we're going to connect it to the splitter. Then we're gonna take these two cables right here and connect them to the graphic card right over here. Let's go ahead and do that. Always double check your connections to make sure everything's connected properly. Now we're gonna connect this part to the USB cable. And after this, we're going to install our risers. Align the riser evenly with the graphic card and slightly push it in until it clicks. Now the next thing you guys will do is screw in the graphic card. We're only gonna do one graphic card at a time. Don't install all of them at the same time. We have to do one at a time to make sure everything works properly. Now the next thing we're going to do is take that same cable and take the little six pin connector and connect that to the riser. This cable will power the riser. Now after this, you guys are gonna go on control panel. You're gonna go on display adapters and make sure the graphic card shows up. If it shows up, you will then move on and install the next card. If it doesn't show up, that means you either have a bad connection or a bad riser. After you guys install all your graphic cards, if you only installed one stick of RAM, you might get this little message right here that says your memory is running low. You can go under the control panel and increase your virtual memory. 
After this, you guys will go on NiceHash.com and download the Quick Miner. Don't mistake the Quick Miner with the regular NiceHash Miner. The Quick Miner will automatically overclock your graphic cards for you so you won't have to mess with the settings. It will make everything super easy. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As you can see, it's very easy building a rig. I know it sounds intimidating, but trust me, it's a very easy process. You guys can definitely do this by yourself. Never pay someone to make a rig for you. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.